Hey, it's Roberto Mickey again, and we've got a great video on a right trigger thumb release. Trigger fingers are one of the most common things I see in my office, and this is a great example of a surgery that we do all the time. So we decided to change the format of some of our videos here, and in this segment, we're gonna show some line drawings of the anatomy, so the viewer like you can have a better idea of what we're doing during the surgery. So this is a right thumb looking from the palm side directly at the volar surface of the thumb. And now we've added the bones in blue. Starting from the top, the small bone on the top is called the distal phalanx. The bone in the middle is called the proximal phalanx. And the bottom bone is called the metacarpal. Unlike our other fingers in the hand, we only have two phalanges or two phalanx bones in the thumb. In a normal finger, like the index finger, you have a distal phalanx, a middle phalanx, and a proximal phalanx. But in the thumb, you only have a distal phalanx and a proximal phalanx. There are two joints in the thumb. One is called the interphalangeal joint, which is the joint between the distal phalanx and the proximal phalanx. And then you have the metacarpal phalangeal joint, which is between the metacarpal and the proximal phalanx. Now here in red, we have the flexor pollicis longus tendon, which is the main tendon that bends the thumb at the interphalangeal joint and at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. In a trigger finger, the flexor pollicis longus tendon gets stuck at the level of the A1 pulley and causes the finger to get stuck and what we call trigger. In this line drawing, we've added the two pulleys in green, the A1 pulley, which is sitting over the metacarpal phalangeal joint, and the oblique pulley, which is sitting directly over the proximal phalanx. During this surgery, we're gonna make an incision directly over the A1 pulley or over the metacarpal phalangeal joint and try to avoid damaging the oblique pulley and only cut the A1 pulley. If you damage or injure or cut the oblique pulley, then you will get something called bowstringing where the tendon will not stay up against the bone. And when you go to bend your finger, the tendon will come disengaged from the bone and come forward, making you lose range of motion and strength. So during the surgery, we're gonna do everything in our power to only cut the A1 pulley. And we're gonna make a cut where that purple line is on the A1 pulley so that we get rid of the area of constriction and allow the tendon to glide freely without catching or locking. A quick plug for the channel, hit like and subscribe and help out our channel so we can continue making these videos. A quick viewer discretion, this video does show images from a surgery, so if you don't wanna see the inside of somebody, please click away. So in this part of the video, we're going to perform a digital nerve block with 5 cc's of 1% lidocaine, and this is to give us a short-acting anesthetic that acts very quickly. Next, we inject an additional 5 cc's of 0.5% rapivacaine, and the rapivacaine is a longer-acting anesthetic, so it'll give us good post-operative pain control. At this point in the video, we're going to be testing the patient for anesthesia, and we're going to pinch her with a set of ads and forceps which will allow us to tell whether she is properly anesthetized with the local anesthetic and we compare it to an area where we didn't anesthetize. So at this point in time we're going to begin the surgery and we're going to make an incision directly over the metacarpal phalangeal joint with a 15 blade. Now trigger fingers are treated in three ways. Bracing at nighttime, steroid injections, or surgery. In general, surgery is the last option, and in my practice, we at least try to inject two times with steroids prior to offering surgery. The etiology of trigger fingers is either from the flexor tendon swelling, the A1 pulley thickening, or increased synovitis, or a combination of all three things. Now, trigger fingers are associated with certain conditions such as diabetes, thyroid disease, rheumatoid arthritis, menopause, and pregnancy. So at this point in time in the video, we've dissected all the way down to the A1 pulley, and we're gonna create that purple cut that we have there in the line drawing using these iris scissors. We're gonna release the entire A1 pulley, allowing the finger to be triggerless. After releasing the A1 pulley, we're gonna pull the flexor pollicis longus tendon out of the wound to break up any adhesions that might have formed around the tendon because of the triggering and the lack of range of motion of the thumb. So we're gonna pull that thumb FPL tendon right out of the wound, and you can see it there being pulled out on freeze frame. And next, we're going to ask the patient to actively move the interphalangeal joint and then the interphalangeal joint with the metacarpal phalangeal joint. And basically, we're going to demonstrate that there's no longer any triggering of the thumb. So now the patient has full range of motion of the thumb 
and has no longer any triggering when she extends the thumb at the IP and MCP joint. So at this point in time, we're gonna close the wound and we're gonna use a 5-0 nylon in a horizontal mattress fashion to perform this. The stitches will come out in about a week and the patient will start therapy at that point in time. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you at the next one.